Hello beautiful people, welcome to The Progressive. So, in this podcast we'll be covering about focusing. What do you mean by focusing? You can focus on action, you can focus on tasks, you can focus on your skill sets and many more things. So we'll be covering the details of when to focus, when not to focus. Every time focusing will result in taxing your brains. It is the single most established cause of stress. Okay. You can ask any of the corporate training gurus, you can read 101 books, which I did by the way, and they will all tell you pretty much the same thing. So this particular presentation covers when you should focus, how you should focus and when you should switch off. Okay. Keep watching the entire presentation. Okay. Let's now start detailing the corporate attitudes. One of them will first one we'll call it focusing now we will detail here the what is this what's the use or misuse of focusing that is being done in workplace and how you can use um, focus on your work your tasks your actions etc and how you can Unfocus. We will talk about more of unfocusing in the next slides. But in this set, we will see the different aspects of focusing. Everybody is asked to focus, focus, focus. So, what are the what are the things that we are talking about when we talk about focus? Okay. So we are talking about this second bullet over here. This one, uh, focusing tasks, actions, communications, hard skills. Okay. So let's jump in. Focusing is a deliberate. What is focusing? Focusing is a deliberate act of getting cerebral about things, brainy about things, making emotional moods, personal lives take a temporary backseat. You be objective about what you need to get done. For example, you get up, you need to brush your teeth, uh, have a shower, things like that. You don't get emotional about it. You go about it in a very cerebral way. You plan, you execute. That's the act of focusing. Now, focusing can be done on many levels. Focusing can be done on tasks. It can be done on actions. It can be done on communications. It can be done on hard skills. Now, this is relating to your work, whatever your work area may be. So, this last four bullets, we will focus more on now. Speaking of focusing, right? What does this focusing mean? Tasks means tasks are lumps of work, typically your hard skills related to be carried out. Focusing on actions required to move, contact, communicate, discuss, meet, etc. Focusing on communications, uh, let it be written, verbal or meetings or any such. Focusing on hard skills, you are paid to be a professional, whoever you are. You can be a doctor, engineer, lawyer, a government official, whoever you are. You are paid to be a professional in your trained skill area. So focus on your hard skills, developing this, your skills. Okay, so focusing is a deliberate act of getting cerebral. Order. What does it mean? Now, here's important thing for you to learn about the act of focusing. Hmm? Focusing requires a deliberate thinking. It uses prefrontal cortex part. This is the front part of the brain just behind your forehead. So if you decide not to focus on some aspects, what you do is literally send those thoughts behind your brain, the parietal cortex, the behind of back of your brain. So focus really, really requires you to think from the front part of your brain. Okay, the act of focusing requires attention, which consumes a lot of biophysical energy, calories, physiological effort, or part of the human brain. Human brain is naturally not designed to focus; it unfocuses at the first drop. This is why even psychologists and scientists have found out, it's pretty documented now, that any human being's attention span is not more than 15 minutes at a stretch. More than that is very taxing for the brain and it tends to divert, you tend to drift off. You might have experienced this in talking to someone or sitting across a friend or a family member or even in meetings or anything. Even with one to one person, you can't focus more than a certain time. That's because the brain doesn't work that way. It's nothing to do with the person or how boring or how interesting the person is. It's to do with how much your brain can take and take. And so, focusing requires a lot of biophysical energy. It, it, you're taxing your brain when you do focus. Yeah. So, you should never take focusing more continuous effort more than 20 minutes. I would recommend more, not more than 15 minutes at a time. 
take breaks in between 5 minute breaks 10 minute breaks stretch short walk deep breaths come back and then refocus there's another important point next one is uh, you have three types of attention selective attention we'll discuss this a little more what does it mean selective is focusing on one thing while you are ignoring others divided attention also known as attention switching is where you switch your attention to multiple sources of information at the same time jumping from one to another yes sustained attention is remaining focused on something for a long period of time obviously that is more taxing yeah so what is selective attention one can typically discuss with a colleague when you are at when you are attentive to aspects which only concern you directly and ignore the rest of the information presented by the person is selective attention selective attention is useful to consider only aspects related directly to your work and ignore personal opinions individual points of view etc right divided attention you use during department or project or group meetings when you're meeting with a whole bunch of people so many people are sharing so much of information across a meeting if there are 10 or 15 people in the meeting room everybody is having a different point of view their opinions their own version of facts etc etc are going around the room so divided attention at work typically requires one to switch focus on different aspects of the same work like administrative finance marketing project engineering design testing hr etc while in meetings of different disciplines but part of the same task force or group that's where you use this part divided attention you use sustained attention only doing your core work what you are assigned to do let's say you're a doctor doing surgery or you're an engineer doing your design work or you are um, um, a lecturer or a professor carrying out your teaching work you're carrying out your sustained action that's where you need your sustained attention when it's just you and your work in your workstation or no disturbances or are you at a teaching class or something this is when you have a sustained attention this gets a lot of work done as a core productive time for you okay so how do you handle this now here before we step into that we we must address some things which inherently all of us as human beings are human beings inherently are emotional beings that is to say their internal states are emotional we also call them moods and not mental they use their brain power only for organizing tasks execution planning action etc this is the reason why there is a lot of emotional misunderstanding conflicts and drama in any human interaction be it work or personal yeah mood is a simplistic term underlying which is a complex set of emotional information inside you regarding a person's self image resulting perceptions their way of thinking their way of perceiving their way of associating with the world their way of making a connection with the world all these kinds of things are there an emotional being as an emotional being sorry the, the human have your own personal life your family your friends when humans stay together they affect one another this affect has an effect on you just like when you affect them depending on what transpires in your day your personal life it affects your moods this moods bring you bring to the workplace what happens at home you bring to work what happens at your work you take it home now what are these because humans are emotional beings this is natural it's going to happen the key point here to be noted is how you manage them yes so events like for example what affects your moods okay external events traffic your mainstream media your social media these days act your daily mood as well as your mental focusing abilities you avoid participating in negativity within all mainstream media social media tv newspapers etc so it will help you not overwhelm your emotional state and you don't carry a sense of skepticism and cynicism over time that is built up don't continuously indulge in taxes market current events politics all this violence and drama being played out in the name of racism and all this other bullshit that's going on avoid participating in it that doesn't have anything directly to do with you traffic is another one is a huge contributor to stress if you travel huge distances each day to work back and forth you are having a problem there it affects your moods Uh, a fraction of external events either immediately happening around you is reported by msm mainstream media 
that's actually going to affect you in any way. You sit and read mainstream media news or newspapers or anything. You are participating emotionally as an emotional being into the events which have no direct impact many times on your lives. A fraction of what is being said in a newspaper or in uh, mainstream media, social media or any of this media that we have, most of which is misrepresented and uh, calculated to induce more fear and drama inside you, you should avoid. The more you avoid that, the more it becomes easy for you to maintain your emotional balance. So, let's talk about focusing more now. Focusing on tasks. What does it mean? Tasks typically are units of work that are required to be carried out by you pertaining to your core discipline. What are you supposed to do? Right? The things that are tasks that need to be done. Tasks need to be segregated by time required for completion. Time management is a key here which we'll talk about in later slides. Priorities and target of completion, planning and scheduling, overlap. Uh, know how much time you personally require to complete on any given task. This is part of you as being a professional. You need to know and plan your tasks. How much time do you require to complete a particular task? This is core of a hard skill. As a professional, you will be required to plan your work effectively. This is one of the things you learn as an ex through experience. This can't be taught because who you are is very unique. How much time you will take to complete depends upon your skill level and many, many other factors. And how much you learn, how much efficient you become. Know how to demand a priority of a task. Okay, So, if some superior asks you to carry out a certain task, you should ask him what's the priority if you've got a number of tasks. right? We'll discuss more of this later also. You need to plan and communicate properly. This comes focusing on actions. What does focusing on actions mean? Actions are a verb form requiring you to move, contact, communicate, discuss, meet, etc. during your work. Actions need a when and a who. That means who are you going to talk, what are you going to do and how are you going to do it. Actions are always linked to tasks. I mean directly impact the delivery and quality of your work. Much time and energy is wasted in organizations, my experience, because the teams and individuals spend time chasing other people or clients for the right information required at the right time. Always communicate directly what information you need to the person or the team head from whom you need it and follow it up for that via email so that you are on record when you ask for the information. Over time this will get more efficient. Yeah. Actions which require participating in discussions and meetings require divided as well as selective attention from you. So go back to the slide where I spoke of selective and divided attention. So it doesn't become a stressful experience for you. Know how much to demand a priority of a task from your superiors. Right? We talked about this. Focusing on hard skills. Hard skills are your core competency. So hard skills is where you develop yourself. If you are an engineer, electrical engineer, you study more on your own time. You become a better academic. Or if you are a doctor, you study more books. Revise. Go back to the books, go back to internet, research the topics that you need to study to make yourself a better competent professional, be it economics, be it mathematics, uh, be it any, any field of subject where you are a professional. Okay. So we'll end with this. Some points to ponder about focusing. This is important to learn and know. And it's not being taught anywhere like this, as far as I know. Focusing always consumes a lot of mental, emotional and physical energy. Bear that in mind, okay? Don't spend too much time at a stretch focusing on anything, okay? It will tax your brain too much. This is one of the primary causes of stress. The craving and consequently consuming of tea, coffee, salty snacks at work are common due to the fact, this is a fact, you can read it up, that the brain consumes a lot of sugar and salt to process neural information. Your neurons, the way they are transmitting in the brain, if you focus too much, they consume a lot of sugar and salt. That's why people tend to, at workplace, drink a lot of coffee and tea, maybe even smoke. It's to stimulate, keep the brain state stimulated. This creates stress for your brain. Focusing is a brain function used to ex exclusively and for emotional being, the ah, we lost a little bit there. So it's a brain function, as we know. It uses the prefrontal cortex, and for an emotional being like human beings, you need to do less of it. We don't need to do more of focusing. 
never do more of focusing at a stretch it is just too taxing for your brain and you are more of an emotional creature not of a brain creature this is not the way that it is taught is it so excessive compulsive bouts of smoking uh, smoking focusing is one of the primary causes of stress mental exhaustion lack of mental clarity etc yeah